Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm taking a first look at the Knit Collection 4. It just came out recently. I've had a few people ask me about it, and of course I was curious as well. So I've got that product set, that collection, whatever you want to call it, and there's some nice new things added. There's a couple things about it. It's not really specifically about version 4, but just about the Knit Collection that I'm a little bit like, uh, I don't know, confused by, for lack of a better word, but I'll talk about that. But there's some really cool stuff added uh, primarily in two apps, and that's the first thing I want to talk about. Let me just show you here. I've got a photo. It's just a JPEG. I'm just going to show you kind of some of the new stuff in the products, but the first thing is, like, it, it's Knit Collection 4, but Analog Effects Pro is version 2, Color Effects is version 4, Define is 2, HDR Effects is 2, Perspective effects is one, Vivaze is three, Silver effects is three. It's a little confusing, I guess, is, is the word. And that is, you've got uh, basically eight products, I believe, that are the Knit Collection, and it's Knit Collection version four, but the individual products are different version number. It just seems like you should make them all the same version number if it's in Knit Collection four. They should all be version four. So if you need to skip from analog effects two to analog four, it just seems cleaner. I don't know. That's just a thing for me for whatever reason. The other thing, and I'll show you this, and that is they made some significant UI or user interface updates to two products, which is Viveza 3 and Silver FX Pro 3. But they didn't do it to any of the other products. So like if you got some of the other stuff, you're, you're in the old user interface, why not just update the UI on every one of them? So those are my complaints. For like a better word, you know, are they big? Not really. Is the product good? Absolutely. Good product cool uh, features and the new stuff is cool. And I'm gonna show you some of that. This is not gonna be in depth. I'm gonna hit kind of high level. The first thing, as I said, is the new user interface. Let me go ahead and just drag this photo over to Silver Effects Pro 3. Let's get it going. And here we are, just an iPhone pano. I've shown you this in uh, previous videos. You get presets down the left. You can come in here and say high contrast. And then you've got the editing tools on the right hand side. I'm gonna go back to neutral, which is really just no preset. But what I want to do is adjust this. Now, one of the cool things that was really unique when the Knit Collection first came out, and by the way, I first bought this collection of tools in, I don't know, 2010, 2011, 2012, years ago. And honestly, I lived in it. It was what I did. I did some basic edits in Aperture. If I made an HDR, I did that in Photomatix. And then I went to Color Effects Pro and did all my color stuff. I don't really do that anymore, as you may know from watching my other videos. But Color Effects Pro, still a great product. It just didn't get any updates here. So again, I'm, I'm confused about that. I wish they would update everything if they're going to give a new UI to two of them. Why not give the new UI to the other ones? Again, kind of nitpicky. This kind of drives me nuts, as, uh, as you can tell. Having said that, good products, of course. I don't want to get off topic here. So here I am in Silver Effects Pro. And you can come in here. And you can see this section on the right-hand side is Global Adjustments. So if I wanted to adjust the mid-tones, maybe pull down the shadows a little bit. You know, I can go here and apply some contrast across the entire photo. And if you do a comparison of before and after, you can see I've, you know, very quickly done a uh, very simple adjustment uh, globally. Now, one of the cool things, as I said about Nick, is that they have this U-point technology, which allows you to add what's called a control point, which it looks like, and I'm using air quotes on purpose, it looks like a radial mask because it's circular. And that's the only thing it really has in common with a radial mask. It's much more intelligent, much more detailed. And let me show you how that works because that is a key feature of the Knit Collection. So instead of doing structure adjustments and all those kind of things down here in this global adjustment section, I'm just going to collapse that to make the screen less busy. I'm going to focus here on control points. So a control point, as the name implies, is a point you can enter. You just click and you can see I've now got a circle. And you'll also notice in that bottom right hand menu that a number of options opened up and those options are specific to the control point, which is one of the nice things. Let me close this side menu so that we can see more of the photo. So I I've got that control point. I can just hit control D if I can see that. Control D, I've got another one. I'm gonna drag that over here. I'm gonna hit control D again and get another one and put it here. And I'm gonna hit control D again and get another one and just put it over here. Now, I haven't adjusted these control points at all, but I'm going to. So here's what I want to do, and that is make adjustments. And by the way, you can drag this to make it larger or smaller on each of these control points so that it covers a broader area. I'm going to go ahead and increase all of these 
And then, you know, of course, whoops, I missed that. There you go. And of course, you can drag that center point and move these things around. But before you do that, here's what I recommend doing. And this is one of the cool new things. You used to be able to go in and just click on this little button here and you will see the mask view. So you can go and move this around. And remember, if you know masking, you know that white reveals and black conceals. So the mask view, super important. And that allows you to see where here, the mask is being applied for this particular adjustment, but here's the new cool thing. When you're in mask view, you now have luminance and chrominance. And so what you can do is you will watch the mask view change and it allows me as I'm dragging this luminance and I can drag chrominance as well. You can see that I'm tightening up and getting more specific with my masking. There we go. Let me highlight that mask. And once again, I can adjust the luminance of that mask and I can adjust the chrominance as well. So you can see that it allows you to come in here, and now let me go to control point one, and maybe I wanna adjust that as well. By the way, you can move around. Oops, I gotta turn on the mask view so you can see it, there you go. Um, move this around as you can see that mask adjusting. Remember, white conceals, black reveals, so the mask is adjusting. That's why I say it's much more powerful than a radial mask. It's circular like a radial mask, but the mask is not being applied equally like it is in a radial mask. So once again, I've got that mask highlighted. I can come in here and I can target some of those adjustments by adjusting luminance and chrominance. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna go over here to number four. I'm gonna turn that on. And now I'm on number four here. And once again, I'm gonna adjust luminance. And uh, let's just say I'm gonna do that. So now, by the way, you can turn all these on or off with a single button. But there you go, before, uh, or I should say mask view on for all of these control points and mask view off. In other words, I can now see the photo. The other thing I can do is I can highlight each one of these and come down here and make adjustments to apply across every control point. And that's what I wanna do here. So I've adjusted the luminance and chrominance for each area. And now what I wanna do is just Maybe I wanna increase the contrast a little bit, maybe increase the structure, because I wanna crunch up some of those areas. You can see how that's being applied. And I'm going a little heavy here. It's a black and white, you can do that and people don't get offended. Um, but let's pretend I'm happy with all that. Here's another cool thing. I've got all four of those together and highlighted, and now I can create a group so I can, actually before I do that, let me tell you what I can do. You can double click and name that so that I can name that control point one left, then control point two could be center one, and then control point three could be center two, and then control point four could be center, or excuse me, right. What I wanna do is I want to just highlight all four of these because here's another cool thing you can do. I can click this icon and I can group them, and then I can name the group, which would be called foreground. And now I've got four different control points grouped together and I can edit that group as a whole makes it a lot easier because the next thing I might want to do is add another control point and I might just want to start sticking control points across the sky and adjusting that independently. So now I've got control points five through 10 and this is gonna be sky. So I just wanna highlight these. I wanna group them and I wanna call group two sky. Boom. And now that I'm on sky, maybe I wanna take structure down and soften that up. Maybe I want to not amplify the whites. Maybe I want to take the brightness down. I'm just kind of hacking here. I don't have a particular plan for this, but what I'm able to do is, let me turn this off. There's the sky before and there's the sky now. So having that group gives you the ability to not just organize your control points where you might have a bunch and you lose track. You can stick them in groups, but you can also edit that group as a whole. You've also down here for any individual control point, you've got these selective tones. So you can adjust highlights, mid-tones, shadows, and blacks, and that's pretty helpful. The other thing is Clearview is in here, and Clearview is something that's in Photolab 4, and it's basically like a, it's kind of like clarity. It's, it's really good. It can get really intense quickly, and I've already made this photo kind of intense. So I'm a little nervous about how much this is gonna to apply to the photo, but there you go, that wasn't too bad. So that's at 21%, but Clearview allows you to really get a nice crisp shot. I like that quite a bit. The other thing too is you've got all these film types and film grain, so you can click into here and take a look at so many different additional adjustments. That's in film type. Let me close a selective adjustment. Each of these little menu sections opens up. 
Uh, and let me show you film grain. You've got the option to do that there as well. So Silver FX Pro, very powerful, very capable. Some nice new stuff, including better U points, better control points, better technology behind that with the luminance and chrominance slider, and also the clear view, super helpful. Not to mention the film types and film grain, pretty nice stuff. Let me go and get this same photo. I'm just gonna close this and I'm gonna take this so same photo. I'm gonna stick in, in Viveza 3 because that's been updated as well. I wanna show you a couple of things there. Okay, same new UI. You've got presets on the left that you can click through and do your various things. I'm not gonna use a preset here. I'm gonna click neutral, which is basically no preset. And I wanna close that side menu so I can get my photo. And then once again, global adjustments. So you can come in here and say, yeah, I wanna add a little bit of structure maybe pull down some shadows, maybe a little bit of contrast, but I don't wanna overdo it, but I, you know, hey, I like that photo, pretty cool. I also got a selective tone section here. I can adjust those if I want, but down at the bottom is what I really wanna get into. I'm gonna close global adjustments. By the way, you've got white balance, which is kinda of nice. I'm gonna close that. And once again, I'm gonna go into control points and I'm gonna drop some here across this ice uh, section, for lack of a better word. And, and this time, I'm not gonna group them. You can do the same thing here, but I'm gonna go in and I wanna activate the mask view. I'm gonna click on control point one and you know again, move it around, figure out where it's best fitting, what you wanna adjust, adjust your size accordingly. Maybe I wanna make this one a little bit bigger. If I could grab that, there you go. Oops, not that big. And then of course, luminance and chrominance once again to tighten up and refine the mask to get better control over how these edits are applying within that control point. I'm gonna go do similar things, make some adjustments to luminance and chrominance here in control point two. I'm gonna do the same in control point three, something like that, and maybe expand this a little bit, something a little bit bigger to cover bigger area. And then this control point four, also gonna make that bigger, and I'm gonna pull it down there and adjust luminance. So you can see how I'm refining the mask. White reveals, black conceals, just remember that. And uh, that mask view, super helpful. And the fact that you have luminance and chrominance allow you to get better control over the U point, which is basically telling Viveza 3 where you want the edits to apply. So once again, I'm over here on control point four. Let's just say I wanna add some contrast and it's only gonna affect that area. I'm gonna just go ahead and go to 100. And let's take the brightness down so you can see you can see how I'm impacting that area. And again, it's not doing everything because the mask is very specific and controlled. Now that's too much. I did it over the top on purpose, but I just wanted to point out how you can use the control points to get very specific. And it allows you to really target certain areas. And I love the ability to rename them and group them because it allows you to remember, you know, you're not gonna, if you have 15 or 20 control points, you're very quickly gonna say, God, which one is that again? It's much easier just to group them because um, that'll help you keep track of them. I love that. Okay, one other thing that they've added is what's called a meta preset in Photoshop. So here I'm in Photoshop. I've got my Nick Collection Selective Tool. Um, so you can come in here and choose a particular app and edit with that. But in the bottom, there's meta presets. And as you can see, these meta presets are basically, as it says, it's a sequence of Nick Collection presets. And the app that's being used in this preset is uh, here based on the icon that represents the app. So you would have to recognize that. The black and white one is Silver FX Pro, that's kind of easy, but truthfully, because they all look the same, it might get kind of confusing. Here's the thing about these. If you use Photoshop all the time, you may like this quite a bit. The challenge I find is that you have to click on one and apply it in order to see what it looks like. There's not a preview window. That makes it kind of challenging, but otherwise you just click on these and it starts to apply whatever that combination of presets is from the two different apps that are listed there. And then it takes it a minute, it chugs through and applies it to your photo. And here you go, the Sharp and Intense was a combination of, I believe that's Color Effects Pro and of course Silver Effects Pro. Now what I recommend doing is like duplicating the layer so you could adjust the opacity if you wanted to. And I'm not really a Photoshop guy, so I'm sure there's other tips and tricks for how to use this within Photoshop. But that Meta Presets is new in Nick 4. There's also improvements on the Lightroom experience where you can copy and paste presets from one image to the other within Lightroom. Super helpful if you're also a Lightroom user. One of the other cool things about Silver Effects Pro and Viveza getting this update is it allows you to save the presets that you may create with the control points. And so if you have a group of images from the same shot, 
or same shoot, if you will, and you wanna basically reuse a look where you had a number of control points applied, you can save those within a preset and then reapply them to that group of photos. Also in perspective effects, there were some updates to the optics modules for new cameras and things like that. So overall, pretty solid update. I think the question is, is it worth it to you? If you already have the previous version of Nick, are you getting enough out of this Viveza update and the Silver FX Pro update to take advantage of these and make it worth the money? That's a, a really a personal decision. I think it's a solid update. As I played more with the new user interface in Viveza and Silver FX Pro, I gotta say, I like it a lot. I love what they're doing with the control points. It does give you, as the name implies, a lot of control. I just wish they would update Color Effects Pro and, you know, Analog Effects Pro and bring them all up to speed with the same UI. It seems a little disjointed to me, but hey, I don't write software for a living. I'm sure it's a lot of work and I'm sure that they're heading in that direction. Maybe, who knows, maybe there'll be a dot release this year that's a free update for users. I have no idea. I'm not saying that there is. I have no inside information. Maybe they're heading in that direction with the other apps. I certainly hope so. The new UI is pretty solid. So that's it. That's my first look on the Nick Collection 4. Primarily, the updates are in Viveza and Silver FX Pro, as I showed you, with some enhancements to the Photoshop and the Lightroom experience and things like that. Hope it gives you some idea of what this update is all about and how you can use it. And thanks for watching, my friends. I'll see you really soon. You guys take care of yourselves and adios.